Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, MVP Aero chooses Maine to build their prototype, the popularity of skydiving is growing, Army pilot reaches 10,000 hours in an Apache helicopter. I'm Bree Cross, it's January 29th, 2016, and this is Airborne Unlimited. When the MVP Aero Multipurpose Light Sport Airplane was introduced in its mock-up stage at EAA AirVenture 2014, it was a showstopper. Designed for operation on land, water, and snow, it can be used as a fishing boat or be converted into a camping tent. The project has been underway for a while now and has now developed to the point where MVP Aero has selected a location to build its first prototype, according to an article in the Bangor Daily News. The prototype will be constructed at the former Navy Air Base at Brunswick Landing, Maine. The article credits Paul Richards, MVP's Director of Business Development, as saying the company picked the former Navy base because of its advanced airport facilities near the Androscozen River and Casco Bay for testing the flying boat, local expertise both in composites and boat building. The article cites Richards as saying the company estimates that it will take about 18 months to two years to develop the prototype. The U.S. Parachute Association says that for the fourth year in a row, more and more people are not only skydiving for the first time, they are also taking up the sport as a hobby and a passion. In 2015, USPA membership again set a record high, topping 38,000 members for the first time in the association's 69-year history. USPA says that more than a half million people experienced the thrill of skydiving for the first time last year. These first-timers and USPA members combined to make roughly 3.2 million skydives at more than 230 USPA-affiliated skydiving schools and centers across the country. USPA also welcomed nearly 6,500 new members and issued more than 3,700 basic skydiving licenses, proving that more first-timers are coming back to pursue the sport and become certified solo jumpers. The USPA tells us that just about anyone 18 years of age or older can take to the skies after some comprehensive safety instruction. In fact, all it takes is a half hour of ground school to prepare for a tandem jump, the easiest and most popular way to experience skydiving for the first time. After the break, Boeing features Army Pilot and a video. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115 horsepower turbocharged airplane at airplanefactory.com. Welcome back. If you would like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. Army Chief Warrant Officer Ken Jones has reached a milestone in his flying career to which many may aspire but no one else has reached. He's racked up 10,000 hours in Apache helicopters. Jones was featured in a video posted to the Boeing website marking his accomplishment. Jones began his career flying Apache helicopters with the A variant in 1986. He served in the Army and the Utah National Guard, completing three tours in Afghanistan and one tour in Kuwait. During his tours in Afghanistan, Jones accumulated 2,270 combat hours in the aircraft. Now Boeing says that Jones is getting ready to fly its latest variant of their Apache before he retires. It's Friday and that means that it's time for ANN CEO and Editor-in-Chief Jim Campbell to check in with his weekly barnstorming commentary. This week, Jim talks about what was and what could have been when he says we were spacefarers once, when we had courage. Here's this week's barnstorming. Thanks, Brian. Hi, folks. While there are a number of topics I'd normally be discussing uh, at this point, I wanted to go into a little bit of history. I remember being a fairly young fellow watching TV one night, I think it was Lost in Space, believe it or not, when across the television came a bulletin that something horrible had happened down at, at that time, Cape Kennedy. The Apollo 1 crew had been lost in a fire. 
I knew that my life was going to be involved in aviation and aerospace. And even then, it was a tragedy of the highest order. And as I grew, and as I began to understand the sacrifices that must be made in order to push technology, push innovation, and push our way above and beyond the birthplace of Earth and out among the stars, the tragedies that occurred later to Challenger, to Columbia, and of course even recently to the crew of Virgin Galactic, it all comes down to the fact that there is no progress without risk that extraordinary men and women of infinite courage push boundaries every day. Some ways small pushes, some ways huge steps, huge leaps, huge bits of progress that allow us to build a better world for all. We were once a significantly aggressive spacefaring country. We are no more. We may get back to some of it, thanks to the efforts of Musk and Bezos and so many others, we're seeing a nascent commercial space industry grow, and we're seeing them take great leaps and some great risks to move things forward. But let us never forget that in common courage possessed by the men and women of Apollo 1, of Challenger, of Columbia, of Virgin Galactic, and of so many others in so many ways throughout the aviation and aerospace world got us to where we are. It only took two things, the ability to dream big and the ability to accept risk. We can still dream big. Risk, not so much from the government side, but for the folks that are pushing the boundaries in commercial space and in commercial aerospace and commercial aviation, well, our future now rests solely with them. And maybe in the long run, that's a good thing. But in the meantime, we must all be aware that great sacrifices were made, that they were remarkable people. And take a moment today to remember what extraordinary courage existed up till now and what extraordinary courage must be utilized in order to bring us further into the future. For the Aero News Network, Airborne and Aero TV, I'm Jim Campbell, and I am in awe of those who have gone before. After these messages, Civil Air Patrol plays the bad guys for Air Force practice. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. Since 2001, MGL Avionics has produced avionics for experimental and light sport aircraft. The flagship product is the IEFIS, a comprehensive next-generation flight, engine, and navigation instrument designed to meet the demands of the modern pilot. See more at www.mglavionics.com. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. The California wing of the Civil Air Patrol routinely flies into restricted airspace to simulate a trespassing aircraft while the Air Force practices intercept techniques. On February 3rd, they'll be simulating targets in the planned Super Bowl 50 restricted airspace. The Air Force is taking the future of air power to international audiences in England this summer. F-35A Lightning IIs will fly in a heritage flight and be on public display at the Royal International Air Tattoo and Farnborough International Air Show. FBO Summit Aviation has made a proposal to the Springdale, Arkansas Airport Commission that it will pony up for facility improvements, but they want a long-term lease to make it work. Summit is asking for a 30-year agreement on the terminal and fuel facility. 
The pilot of a Robinson R-44 helicopter towing a banner for Budweiser beer in Weddington, North Carolina, was forced to jettison the banner when an unspecified mechanical problem occurred. The banner landed on a house and no injuries occurred. An inspection by a UAV of the Gulf of Mexico has been completed by Sky Futures, a commercial drone company. The inspection is the first to be carried out in the Gulf of Mexico by a drone for the oil and gas industry. Well, that's the trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. In the world of aviation, striving for improvement is always a must, and that's what the Navy is doing. The U.S. Navy's Helicopter Test Squadron 21 recently completed nine days of tests aboard the USS Eisenhower aircraft carrier with a goal of making minor changes to takeoff and landing procedures for the V-22 Osprey that will increase the aircraft's payload. Naval Air Systems Command spokesman Billy Ray Brown said the team flew 25.6 flight hours, performing 69 short takeoffs and minimum run-on landings. The flights included rolling takeoffs and run-on landings that would allow the aircraft to operate at a higher gross weight. The techniques take advantage of what the helicopter world calls translational lift. When the final parameters and procedures have been developed and evaluated, they will be incorporated into the Osprey's Naval Air Training and Operating Procedures Standardization Program. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource. Have a wonderful weekend. We will see you Monday.